welcome back to the Tracks of Success Story webinar series with American company Bush Brothers. I'm joined today by... Hello, my name is Mike Yost. I am the president of Mesa International. Mesa is a 24-year-old not-for-profit industry association that's focused on finding the business value at the intersection of where manufacturing meets IT. Hello, my name is Dave Ray. I'm the Vice President for Operations here at Parsec Automation. We are the supplier for Traxxas, a leading operations management and manufacturing execution software. Hello, my name is Travis Tomaszewski. I'm an Operations Area Manager at Bush Brothers & Company. Uh, we are a producer of baked beans, and we have been using the Traxxas software for about five years now. And I'm Catherine Gutierrez, Director of Client and Partner Relations here at Parsec. Today, we will be focusing on first steps with Traxxas. Mike, I'd like to start off with asking you about a common theme that we see across manufacturers, and that is a miscalculation of OEE, and sometimes it's even with a software solution in place. So from your perspective, can you share with us some of the common mistakes and pitfalls that you see when calculating OEE and what can be changed or avoided to get an accurate OEE calculation? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, I think the main thing is to have a common, agreed-upon definition of what metrics like OEE are. One manufacturer I worked with years ago had a 22-page definition of OEE. Now, I'm not saying that everybody needs to go to that level of detail, but that definition was understood and accepted across every plant around the world and by all the suppliers and machine builders who build equipment whose performance was going to be monitored by OEE-type systems. So having that baseline, I, I think a major issue with the OEE is getting people to trust the numbers. Uh, it's not uncommon when you start to monitor OEE that the numbers may come back lower than expected, sometimes rather dramatically lower. They could be lower than you want to admit. Uh, they might even be lower than you've been telling your boss. So that can be a shock for people. But I think the main thing is to be committed to why you're doing this and remember that your goal is to improve the performance of the company overall, and you'll be able to work through issues like these. Great feedback, really appreciate it. Travis, I'd like to get your perspective from a client's view. How were you able to stress the importance of tracking downtime to operators and plant managers? Yeah, this was uh, kind of a continual process and it continues to be a process, obviously. Uh, at the beginning, it was much like any change. We It was met with a little bit of resistance and some frustration from mostly the operators. But since we've kind of been able to show the value of the software system and, and the importance of tracking it to help us make better decisions and, and be a little bit more quick to react versus, and prevent things versus react to issues, we show that value by giving the reporting capability to maintenance so that they can fix, fix the issues or see the issues trending before they ever even happen. Um, and then showed the operators that we were actually taking all of their feedback given to us in journal entries or notes to alarms um, and, and following up with them on a regular basis. Uh, I think that was probably one of the biggest things was just showing the operators that we were reading it. We were listening to what they had to say and then following up on what was actually happening out on the floor. As far as the plant management, they, they reviewed it daily uh, and gave them just a further insight into that operation. Uh, we also were able to create different uh, reports based on what they needed because of the customization of Traxxas. So really all levels of the business were impacted by the change and it didn't take a lot of work to really show them that, that tracking downtime is, is an extremely important part of our process. That's great to hear. With OEE being a calculation of availability, performance, and quality, how challenging was it to map known downtime reasons to each loss type? Yeah, it wasn't, uh, I mean, we kind of had an idea of what we wanted to have happen in the system. We wanted to have certain things like sanitation or changeovers be availability losses and then any of the equipment downtime performance losses. So with the help of Parsec and uh, that team that I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, Bush Brothers, they worked together and it really was quite seamless to be able to identify what the standard definition of OE is, mostly because of the expertise that Parsec offered us. Um, so it proved to be very simple in our implementation. Great. Dave, I know you worked closely with Bush on this aspect. Can you share with us a little more? 
just uh, going back to the fact that because they have a good collaborative nature amongst their team, um, you know, it's interesting when you start mapping downtimes to these types of OEE reasons, I wouldn't necessarily say there's any right way or wrong way to do it, but as long as you're consistent with it and everybody buys in and agrees to how you're going to classify it, and when you have a collaborative environment and people are willing to work together, you can get to that common understanding and then be able to use a system to track them and move forward. Absolutely. Mike, another thing that we see in performance management is that it can have a really broad scope. How do you see companies measure performance and how has this changed over time? Well, traditionally, companies have measured manufacturing performance along the lines of quality and cost, utilities, rework, maintenance, things like that, in sort of a production bucket. And uh, what we see happening now that we're moving into this digital age that's upon us is that walls are disappearing and companies are looking at all areas of performance, less in a production bucket and more in line with how all of these areas impact overall performance of the organization. Um, you know, I talked before about knocking down walls and communications between departmental boundaries. And nowadays, we see people getting a stronger handle on how performance in one area of production has an impact on the performance of the company overall. So that is changing, and I think it's one of the reasons it's causing people to look down all the way into their production operations, more so today than they have in the past, to understand what's really happening, uh, to ask how do we capture what's truly going on, and how do we use that as a foundation for, for performance management all the way across our manufacturing enterprise? Absolutely. You know, to your point, real-time data is probably the one of the most effective things in that process. And Travis, I'd love to see from you how impactful is Traxxas in providing user interfaces and dashboards at creating and keeping operator engagement? Uh, it's, it's very impactful. Our dashboards that we have kind of created with the help of Parsec have provided the, the pertinent information that operators need uh, and really have, have grown to want uh, actually more throughout kind of our implementation. Uh, we use what we call journal entries, which is basically the ability to type in something as an operator and say this is a little more information about what caused this downtime. We've seen just absolute I mean, it's crazy how many in journal entries we have every shift from our operators that they just want to provide a little bit more data. The dashboards give them the real-time data that they want for performance, for schedule progress, and it really just kind of answers the questions that they always used to have out on the floor. When are we going to be getting done? What are we running? How is our performance? What are these things happening? And that also, all those reports where those journal entries get entered into, all those reports get emailed out to the business at the end of every shift which allows them to, you know, have a voice throughout the business when everyone really sees the same information. So the engagement, we've kind of shown the operators that their voice is important to us and we want to, want to hear from them more. That's great. Dave, would you say there's anything else that Traxxas can kind of do to keep everyone in the organization on the same page about performance? Well, certainly being able to provide some standard, commonly acceptable views of performance, be able to show information, whether it's in real-time dashboards or historical reports. And then also, even if people aren't in the factory or sitting at a computer, being able to send out alerts, send out close of day reports, be able to disseminate information. And I think we've heard this phrase before, to the right person at the right time, regardless of where they are is very, very important. One last point just on this topic had to do with the fact that operators are so key at providing information to the system and a very smart move on Bush Brothers' part was to involve operators in how certain screens were put together, how certain interfaces for entering data, doing the journaling was going to take place. It allowed them to feel like they had a little bit of ownership over it and buy into using those interfaces and those systems as the software was deployed. And that communication, I think, is also key when it comes to identifying root causes. So, Mike, I'd love to ask you, can you share with us any best practices that you've found as far as identifying root causes and prioritizing their repairs? Well, I really think it comes down to having access to accurate information about what's really going on. So the ability to connect and collect and analyze and inform so as to have the intelligence to make, uh, make decisions. And also, a key is to not be afraid to follow wherever that may lead. 
I worked with a manufacturer in my past who said their focus was to make sure that they had access to all the data for everything happening in production. Once they had the data and they applied the proper context to understand what the data were telling them, they could solve any problem. So they would follow the root cause wherever it led them, and they said that the data and the information were their friends. So I think it's a true best practice for getting at the root cause of problems. Absolutely. And Travis, from your perspective, what tools or capabilities has Strax has given you that allows you to identify and record accurate root causes? Well, we actually had a very specific implementation. We use what we call buffer logic, which, which takes an original tag and kind of carries it through our process to our bottleneck. Um, and this was something that was kind of created by Parsec to satisfy what we kind of wanted as a company. It's a very different, it's much more difficult probably to maintain, but it allows us to have very accurate root causes to be reported in the system. We were also able, obviously, to use some of the more standard features, which would be trending of individual alarms on each piece of equipment, uh, which allows us to see what's happening kind of over time and for the maintenance techs to be able to go out there and fix issues before they become a problem. There is just endless reporting opportunities um, and drill down functionality that you can use really on any screen within the Traxxas software, uh, which allows you to get deeper down and understand kind of what's happening. So unfiltered, unfiltered reporting uh, that we use, which even though the line doesn't necessarily stop, Traxxas is running and, and reporting when those things are happening so that we have a little bit further insight, even when things aren't actually causing downtime, to be able to address them before they become an issue. There's a lot of different things that we use, uh, and most of them become kind of standard reports and emailed out to the business so that we have that insight into what's going on before anything ever even happens. That's great. Were there any root causes that surprised you? There were a couple. We had one, actually, in particular, where we had our filler, which is our bottleneck, would start to slow down. I mean, it wouldn't, it would stop for very, very short periods of time. So after seeing that downtime in, you know, seconds of duration that we never saw before with our previous systems, we started to investigate kind of what was going on with the filler. And we found that beyond the filler, previous to the filler, there was a conveyor that was set up with some, some minor adjustments to be made that allowed our cans to flow a little more freely through our conveying system which ultimately, you know, totally took away that downtime as an issue. So there was some things that just allowed us to really dig down into a specific downtime event. And it wasn't actually related necessarily to that piece of equipment, but feeding that equipment was, was a problem, which before we had never been able to even see that there was downtime. So it was interesting to see how many different areas that the software kind of gave us that much further insight into. That's great. Dave, is there any feedback that you have on root cause analysis and how best to address it? You know, earlier in this session, Mike mentioned that when it comes to performance management, that companies, as they become more uh, ready to gather information and, and more data hungry, if you will, are looking at all the different areas that can affect performance. And when we start talking about root causes, Going from OEE, where most people may think they're just going to focus on equipment and assets, um, there are a lot of root causes that can be operational in nature, that can be based off of other resources that you're supplying to production. And what's really, I think, helped Bush Brothers in a sense is that beyond just equipment failures, there's the ability to collect data from a lot of other places. These can be from people, from operators. This can be in the nature of changeover activities or the production schedule. And by bringing all that together and being able to contextualize it, it actually allows them, as, as Travis was just discussing, to go beyond perhaps the initial machine failure and look at some other causes that truly impacted and caused that particular stop. So as companies start looking at performance management and being able to go deeper and want to go deeper, having these systems and solutions that can unify data from a lot of different sources becomes very vital to uh, providing them that complete picture that they'll use to do this type of root cause analysis. Wonderful. 
Dave, Travis, Mike, I want to share the thanks that we've got from our end from hearing your perspectives. I think it's very helpful to gather an overall perspective as well as specific information on Traxxas. And we want to thank everyone for joining the session today. That wraps up episode two of our Bush Brothers Traxxas success story webinar. I'd like to thank everyone for participating. Mike, Dave, Travis, thank you for sharing your feedback with us today. And for our listeners, please join us next time for episode three, where our focus is on operator engagement and delivering intelligence.